Hi, I'm uh, Jon Ulnes. I'm product manager in Nordic at Signicat, which is a, a Norwegian-based trust service provider and identity service provider. I'm going to talk to you today on digital trust the Nordic way, which is mainly about electronic identity, and it's some about trust services. So, as you probably all know, Nordic countries is what you can call the European region, consisting of five countries. And these five countries are very similar, political and legal system, culture, and although two of them are not EU member states, Norway and Iceland, they, um, <clears throat> if for the practical purposes for the topic of this talk, uh, they are subject to the relevant EU legislation. There's lots of long tradition of cooperation between these five countries. Uh, we see also that recently the Baltic countries are sometimes added to the cooperation, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. And I urge you to have a look at the Nordic-Baltic EID cooperation, which is an ongoing project to sort of extend ADAS EID into a more close cooperation between these uh, eight countries. Now, the topic of this speech, all these countries have society infrastructures for electronic identity. Uh, electronic identities that you can use for uh, banking, private services, government, essentially anything. And in all but Iceland, more than 90% of the adult population has access to such a reusable EID. So it's used uh, for anything by anyone in society. But how do you end up in a situation where you have this market presentation of EID? Uh, there's not one single answer, and this is what I'll briefly go through country by country here. So to start from Finland, this is an example of what you could call a fragmented but highly regulated market. Finland has, it's the only Nordic country, possibly the only European country that has a specific electronic identity law. And they've had that since uh, 2005 when they started building their national infrastructure. And this national infrastructure is not built on a single EID, but rather banks have their own EIDs, and you also add uh, one EID that is jointly provided by the mobile operators. So you have today 11 different EIDs, 10 banks and the mobile one, that all work together in a common infrastructure in Finland. And um, I mean, you will be given a menu, and you will select your bank, and you will use the EID for your bank to, to log into anything. That could be another bank, even. Uh, the way they're managing this today is that they've mandated the role of a broker. So the broker will provide one interface to service providers, and on the other side, they will integrate all the different EIDs and make them available to all service providers. On the other extreme end of, um, of making a solution, you have Denmark, where you have a full public-private partnership on electronic identity, and you've had that since 2003, 2004. Uh, the government procured the NEMID service um, in cooperation with the banks, and this is one and only uh, electronic identity available in the Danish market. It's changing now. Uh, they're introducing a new EID called MITID, my EID, uh, next year. Again, a public procurement process and the same cooperation setup. Uh, the interesting thing is that this time they're mandating the same broker role as in Finland. So service providers will select a broker to integrate with. Maybe it doesn't make so much sense when there's only one EID, but it makes it open to more actors to enter the scheme if needed. So in between here, you have Norway and Sweden, where, um, which have done things the same way. Uh, in this case, the government has not been involved in the development of the EID scheme. Uh, both countries have schemes called Bank ID. They are actually very different. Norwegian Bank ID is something completely different from Swedish Bank ID, but they share the same name and they share the same way of establishing it by um, having the banks cooperate to create one common EID that works for all banks. Um, and 
in turn, then, this uh, EID scheme, the bank ID, is accepted also by government and can be used across for all services. Um, Iceland is a bit less widespread uh, use of, um, of, an, of a <coughs> reusable EID, but about 50% of the population has such an EID. Um, they rely a bit more on bank-specific logins. I mean, uh, logins that work only for one bank, and there's a government solution also that works only for government that is being used again. There are some uh, autonomous territories that are part of the Nordics, um, notably Faroe Island will launch a separate uh, EID later this year. So what about trust services in this context? <clears throat> well, there's not that much. Finland, for example, electronic identities do not support signing. So you need to do signing otherwise if you need if you want to do signing at all. Uh, you can do by EID and um, and confirm online that way. The only uh, QTSP qualified trust service provider is by the government and it's not much used. Denmark NEMID supports advanced signatures which is the solution used today, but the new MIT ID will not support signing. So again, you will end up as in Finland, where you have to have other services to add signing. And there's no qualified trust service provider in the Dan Danish market. In reality, there's hardly anyone in the, any QTSP in the Swedish market either, although formally there's one offering validation services. A bank ID supports advanced electronic signatures in Sweden. So that's, that's being used a bit. In Iceland, the uh, EID provider is also a QTSP for signing. And Norway is the odd one out there, where when the banks created the bank ID system, they decided to go for qualified certificates. So it's, uh, it's a QTSP-based scheme. Uh, since uh, they do not provide qualified electronic signature creation devices, however, it's uh, not qualified signature, but rather an advanced signature and qualified certificate. There are also uh, two other actors offering the same level of signature, and uh, my company's signature is a qualified trust service provider for timestamping. Um, how is this used? Why is they're not so much on trust services. Well, first thing to note is that there are no requirements anywhere for qualified signature. There are even few requirements for a specific signature level in general. I mean, not many places where you require even an advanced electronic signature, but advanced signatures are used more or less, and they are being re required for some purposes. Uh, Norway has had a lot of use of e-seals traditionally, services built over e-seals, and uh, Denmark in particular, also Finland, has a lot of use of e-delivery services. But this, I would say, you could say non-reliance on signature is based on uh, two legal principles, the free form of agreements, you don't have to sign it this or that way to have a legally binding agreement. You can do it uh, by many, many, in many ways. And there's also free form evidence. You can file anything as evidence in court, uh, in principle. There's some exceptions to that, but yes. So, what are the pros? Uh, having a national EID system covering 90% of the adult population. Well, obviously for me as a consumer, I have one EID that I use for everything. I can, I'm Norwegian, I can use my Norwegian bank ID for any purpose, uh, virtually any purpose in Norway. It makes it easy for the service providers, of course, because they can integrate one EID system, at least as long as they operate only on a national level. And um, that's it. And for society, um, the reliance on those EIDs uh, is high because um, they are well known and they are trusted by both service providers and society in general. So there's also an observation then that all these um, EID systems in the Nordic countries are partnerships, public sector and banks, one way or another. <clears throat> But there are also cons. 
Um, one of them is that you could, like in Denmark and also in Norway and Sweden, you end up in a monopoly situation. Um, could make the ID solution more expensive, it hampers competition, and uh, you can have closed business models. Uh, not everybody has a bank account, so if that's a prerequisite to get an EID, not everybody will get it, although most will. And there are some issues, because you have one identity you use for everything. Uh, you don't get a targeted identity, you get all information, same information disclosed everywhere, which uh, has some privacy issues, of course. But to sum up the learning points, um, I would say from history that establishing one single EID for society like Denmark, Sweden and Norway <coughs> is really a hard exercise. It requires a lot of coordination and preparatory work. All banks to cooperate and agree that we're okay, we agree, we want this one single one solution, for example. And it's likely that this is not achievable in most countries, although these three countries actually made it. So it's likely much easier to enable uh, a system where you have multiple electronic identities that work together in one system, like Finland has done. Different technologies, different business model, easier innovation to bring in new product, new solutions in parallel to the existing ones. So you have to agree on the common quality, assurance level. Uh, Norway is on high, the other are on substantial. In uh, Iceland is also high, by the way, but in, uh, substantial in um, in the Nordics. Which information do you need to convey from an electronic identity and this principle of reusability across services? And um, I believe that to make uh, ecosystems that work uh, when you don't have a single EID, but you want to make an ecosystem like Finland that works across uh, all society, and this broker integrator role is a core role for scaling include, and that could also include cross-border EID. That's all for today. Thank you.